Here's a few simple suggestions on how to protect your house from termite damage. But first, let's have a short little lesson on the termite report itself. And so here's the thing, we all use the term termite report, but actually the report is called Wood Destroying Pest and Organism Inspection Report. Quite a mouthful, but the thing is, they're not just looking for termites, they're looking for anything that is going to cause wood damage, destroy wood. So any pest in any organism is going to always be looking for a source of food and a source of water. So keep your house as dry as possible. How do you do that? Start by observing if there's any pooled water area. You might have to slope the soil or the concrete away from the house. Another thing to watch out for is planters. If you do have a planter butted up against your house, make sure that you have holes to let the water escape. Or what some people do is they actually remove the soil, put down a thick mill uh, plastic sheeting and put the soil back in. I'm absolutely convinced that the very best protection you can give for getting water away from your house is to install gutters. There is tons of water that comes down that roof. You want it to come down in one spot and take it away from your house. It goes without saying that we have to make sure that there's no water intrusion coming from your roof. But I want you to know that most of the time, it's not from the shingles, it's from the vent pipes and then the flashing or the, the caulking that's below those pipes. So you want to get up there, oh heck, spray some Mr. Henry's or call a roofer and make sure you have no water intrusion. Airflow, very important. Here in Southern California, we have openings in our crawl space outside and up in the attic area. Make sure that those openings are not blocked anywhere, that you actually have that very good airflow to dry things out. So let's go back to that termite report or a wood destroying pest investigation report. But what they do is they have a section one and section one says, yes, we see evidence of termites, subterranean, we see dry rot. Number two are items that could promote damage to wood. So a very common section two, when we do physical inspections, is they find debris under the house. And most of this is from when you had a plumber down there, you did reconstruction and there's old boxes. And what happens is it's laying there and it's allowing moisture to gather underneath it. Again, let's get rid of the moisture. So get down there, all that stuff out. A lot of people don't realize that a termite inspection also includes your shower pants because shower pants are a very common area of water intrusion. So they check that the, the pan isn't leaking by clogging up the faucet, they fill up the pan, they go underneath. And it's just a great time if you're having an inspection every once in a while, just ask them, hey, do you see anything under any toilet or, or um, faucet or uh, tub? So yeah, just make sure that there's no water from your plumbing going into your sub area. When we say a house needs to be fumigated, what we mean is they're gonna put a big tent over it, but they're gonna seal it up and they're gonna blow chemicals in there for a day. So they do this when they see dry wood termites. So dry wood termites, as the name suggests, eat wood. So when I go to a house and I see firewood sitting outside that has been there for years and I can tell it's full of termites, please, get rid of that wood, use it or throw it away because really it's just a hop, skip and a flight in until you have them in your house. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is dry rot and it's really actually the most important thing because really the damage and the cost for repair from dry rot far exceeds anything that it causes by termites. So dry rot, this happens because there is, it's a fungal, it's a fungus, spores are floating through the air all the time looking for that unpainted wood that has a certain level of moisture in it. So of course it attaches to the wood, it eats it, becomes dry and brittle. I mean we've all seen fascia boards which is the board that runs below the roof line where it's just falling apart and, and being eaten by something. So I can't stress enough that you need to keep paint on all the wood on your house as number one defense. Because yes, fumigation, while it's not the cheapest thing, hiring a 
professional trained carpenter to remove wood pieces and reinstall them, that is when it can get extremely costly. So to sum it up, keep your home dry and painted and save yourself time, money, and a lot of angst. Have a great day, Michelle Kay, Long Beach, California.